morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us for today's Ask Me Anything webinar. I'm Jenny Farkas, the co-chair of Creative Coast. And this AMA is being produced behind the scenes by the wonderful team at Stream of Consciousness. And I want to start by um, expressing gratitude. I'm joining you from Victoria, which is the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, today known as the Esquimalt and Songhees nations. So grateful to be able to create and do this important work from this place. Um, I just want to give you a tiny bit of background if you haven't already heard my spiel about Creative Coast before I introduce today's guest. Um, Andrew, if you could put up that slide just for a moment. Thank you. So Creative Coast is an experiment. We're, we're asking the question, what happens if we work together better as an arts ecosystem? So there are 26 uh, arts councils on Vancouver Island and numerous other arts organizations and thousands and thousands of creatives. And you can see by this map that some areas are overserved in the Vancouver Island super region and some areas are underserved by some of these this infrastructure. So this webinar today is, is one attempt to try to fill some gaps, some service and support gaps, tech support as well as other kinds of knowledge. And we've got a number of other initiatives underway. So you're welcome to go to creativecoast.ca to learn more. Um, at the moment, uh, we're, we've got a wonderful guest today, Liz Glassford, who is a digital media specialist who is helping Creative Coast with, with our own digital media strategy. And we've been learning lots and, and, and really benefiting from their expertise. And so thank you, Liz, for, for making time for us today. But the way that this um, next 90 minutes is going to go is uh, Liz is going to start with um, a bit of a presentation and an overview of uh, online presence components. And, um, and then about halfway through, there'll be opportunities for questions. And you can ask your questions in the chat, or you can raise your hand and, and you'll be invited to uh, unmute and uh, hopefully have your camera on and, and, and actually uh, ask your, your question uh, in person. So... Without any further ado, take it away, Liz, and I'm going to join you guys on Zoom in a moment. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, so this program is new to me, so I have no idea who I'm talking to today. So bear with me, everyone. But I'm super excited that you're all here. Um, throughout uh, this presentation, I'm going to ask you uh, quite a few questions. So I really encourage you to participate, uh, put your hands up, uh, speak out loud, put your question into the chat. And uh, the lovely folks here from Stream of Consciousness will, will help me uh, understand what your question is, and then we can answer that for you. So uh, my name is Liz. I am a digital presence coach. So what I do is I help small businesses, artists, and nonprofits with their online presence. So that could be offering one-on-one -on -one coaching where we actually look at your own uh, assets, and then we go through and decide, you know, what can we do to help you understand how to use these better? Um, I'm also a front-end web developer, so I help people build and manage their websites. And I'm a trained uh, SEO, which is a search uh, engine optimization specialist. So um, I do that and also social media strategies. So uh, bear with me as we kind of just dive right to it. So uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to share my screen with you. And uh, I just I want to know kind of where we're at today with how much we know about digital presence. All right, let me just pull this up here. That looks like it's going to work. Oh, come on. There we go. And we should see my screen shortly. Are you seeing that okay, everyone? So my first question for everyone on the call here today is, what is digital presence? Do we know? So, hey, audience, I really want you to, to participate with me. So let me, let me know in the chat. Like, uh, do you know what digital presence actually means? Uh, digital presence is basically how and where we show up online. Okay, so this could be, uh, you know, we sit down at our computer and we type something into a search bar and we think of the research results that we actually get. So sometimes we're going to see like a hit for a business. Maybe that's a website. Maybe it's a social media site. Maybe it's uh, like a listing site like TripAdvisor or Yelp. Uh, 
Uh, maybe it's an ad that we see. So all of these things make up your digital presence. So that's uh, for yourselves, that's your website, if you're running any paid ads, the content that you're creating, if you have any online reviews, your social media channels, uh, business listings, and also media mentions. Okay, so that is part one of how we show up online. But what we really are after is our digital visibility. So having a presence is one thing. That means we've gone on to these uh, particular uh, social media channels or website or, you know, uh, Google My Business, and we've created an account for ourselves. But actually having visibility is a little bit different. So when I say digital visibility, does do people know know what that is? So uh, digital visibility is this is basically how often we show up online. Okay, so it's the overall presence. So having a website or having a social media account doesn't actually mean people are going to find you. So that's usually the most disappointing thing that uh, that people uh, learn is just because we have a website doesn't mean that people are automatically going to be able to find us and know about the product or service that we're offering. So to increase our visibility, we actually need to have a strategy about how we participate in this online marketplace. So that's kind of where we're, we're headed next is uh, if customers kind of don't know who they are or who we are, you know, how, how can they actually find us, right? So that's where our sales funnel starts coming into play. So how do you think people find you online? Right, yes, absolutely. So how do people find us on groups and Facebook? 100%, uh, customers looking for a product and stumble upon you. Absolutely. You know, a link from a social media or Google search. This is fantastic. Yes. So all, all of good things here. That is great. So um, in terms of like how they find us, you know, this is, this is our sales funnel. So most people, we go to Google, you know, as ourselves, we type in our business name and we go, hey, look, I show up. Woo. Congratulations to me. I'm on the first page of Google. Um, but you know, I hate to break it to you, that's your branded search. So that's actually the last step in the sales funnel. So if we type in our brand name or, you know, our artist practice and we don't show up, we know that our visibility is quite low and we, we've got some, some work to do. So um, before we kind of get into the sales funnel, now I want to ask you, what are your goals of being online? Okay. So again, uh, tell, me, tell me in the chat, what, what, uh, what goals do you have for being online? You know, if you're an individual artist, there we go, driving more traffic to sell online. Absolutely. So this is a, a big thing that we that I talk to about a lot of people. Make myself as visible as possible to as many friends to start. Discoverability, audience reach, 100%. Brand recognition. Branding yourself as a creative professional. Absolutely. So these are all great things. Building an audience, interest in programs. Absolutely. Get people to subscribe to your website. So these are all awesome goals. So now that we have our goal, we kind of have a starting point, right? So once we define what an actual goal is that we want to want to have online, we can actually kind of move ahead and we can start asking who, who am I trying to connect with? So uh, I just move past that one there. All right. So now that, now that we know uh, what we want to do, who? So for yourselves as artists, you know, who is your potential audience? Do you know? This is a, a big thing where I, I chat with a lot of people and they go, you know, my product is for everyone. I want to just advertise. I want everybody to find me. And, you know, that is, you know, awesome. But I just always encourage people to that say that, you know, we got to narrow that net down because if we're trying to market to everyone, we're going to spend a lot of time, we're going to spend a lot of money, and we're, uh, we're not going to get the results we want. We really want to narrow that down. And uh, we want to have more of a niche market and a niche focus. Wildlife lovers who want to purchase art, that is a great who. Tourists, absolutely. Uh, an audience for island creatives, people who are interested in buying the art. Older millennials with disposable income. That is a good who. Uh, now we have in, in that particular one, we have an age demographic and we also have a lifestyle demographic. So we want them to be an older millennial and also have income. Uh, that is a great, a great who. All right. So um, now that we kind of know who we want to go and, and connect with, now we can really start uh, narrowing things down. Okay. So. Um, we need to know where, where can we reach my potential clients? So this is something that can be tricky for individual artists. It's a lot harder to decide, you know, where exactly 
uh, people can find us or where exactly I should have a presence online? Because as we know, you know, there's a lot of stuff online and it might not be uh, worth our efforts to be on every single platform. Okay, so we need to know a little bit more about each platform before we decide to go ahead and uh, participate in it. So as an artist, I mean, it's uh, we know that there's a market for us on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you know, TikTok. Um, so those are all places to start. So if you're, uh, if you're also, you know, interested in selling your work or you want to have a newsletter and get people to subscribe to your, your, um, your newsletter, that means we should probably have a website as well. So if we're totally new to online presence, it might be actually really hard for you to figure out this question. Now, if you're an organization and you've been around for a while, then, you know, we're going to use tools to help answer this question for us. So that is using our analytics uh, to make sure that we are connecting with the proper people, the people that are already following us. Now, for individual artists, we want to make sure that we're using uh, the platforms in a professional way. So, you know, do we have a Facebook page to advertise our art? Um, do we have a professional Instagram account? Uh, sometimes I see people and they just, they've got groups, uh, but those groups don't give us any analytics of, of who we're trying to reach. And, and it's a really nice. And sometimes we can get that audience participation, but, uh, it's hard to market that way. Okay. So now that we kind of, we, we know, um, kind of where we should be. The number one question that I always ask people is how, how are we going to have people find us? And I'm sure that that is something that you all want to know and, and probably why you're here. So how do you think people reach you online? All right, we're, we're quiet again. Facebook, okay. People find you through your arts organization, absolutely. All right, Brad, we're getting a, a boosted post on Facebook, Instagram, and your website, uh, your Instagram profile. Oh, people talking to you at a craft fair. Yes, that's excellent. And through local art centers and friends. That's great. So a little bit of word of mouth there as well. People take your card out of market. That's awesome. All right. So when we're, um, I'm losing my voice here for a minute, but uh, when we're talking about that, how um, people are going to find us online in, in two ways. So we're going to look at either a paid search or an organic search result. So this is true if we're on a social media platform or we're actually just browsing a search engine results page. So paid ads, we know what these are. They're, they're paid, right? Um, these are things that we boost, we put money behind, and then hopefully they bring us leads, they bring us awareness, and they just help cast our content into a, a greater net, and hopefully that turns into a return on investment. Now, organic results, uh, this is using your content strategy to find the market. So the organic results is what a lot of people on the call today are probably using. We're using our, our Facebook, our uh, Instagram, we're creating content, we're, we're pushing that content out. And uh, we're trying to get people to follow us that way so we can have, you know, more potential audience, a, a larger potential market for ourselves. So we want to think of paid ads like drinking an energy drink. You know, if we do it correctly, we're going to see a, a big growth. Um, people are, we're going to cast our, our net into that niche market. We're going to spread our content and people are hopefully going to come and follow us or purchase our services. Where organic traffic, it's much, much slower. Okay, so... Um, again, this is probably what you're doing already. So we're using our content strategy and we're going to use keywords and hashtags so we can reach the leads at the top of that sales funnel or, you know, throughout that sales funnel, not just at the bottom. Okay. So when I talk about a sales funnel, um, do you, do you folks know what a sales funnel is? Do you know how that works digitally? Fabulous. All right. So uh, that's, that's a great answer. We don't know what we don't know. So, all right. So when we're talking about a sales funnel, we've got four basic steps that we're trying to hit, okay? So the first step of our sales funnel is called awareness, okay? So that is uh, our client isn't sure what they're looking for yet. They know they have a problem or maybe it's a desire, but they don't know what they want. 
right? Or if we're looking in terms of social media, it's maybe a, a direct message of a post that was sent directly to them by a friend. Or maybe they see a post on our organization's newsfeed and they're like, hey, what's this? I'm, I'm getting a little curious now. Um, uh, after that, we're kind of moving down that sales funnel into our second step, which comes interest. Okay, so once that client kind of learns that there's something out there for them, now they're interested, right? Now we want to uh, start doing some research. So uh, for a client or somebody trying to find you, this could be, you know, comparing products. Or if you're a nonprofit, maybe they see some of your services and go, does anybody else offer these? I'm going to do some research now. And uh, for you as an individual, this means we're going to use content to establish your expertise. So why should somebody choose you online? You know, why should they pay attention to your art? Why should they follow your social accounts? Okay. After that, we move down. And then our third phase of that sales funnel is a decision. So the client is now going to decide, am I going to sign up for a service? Am I going to give you my email for that new subscription? Am I going to make a purchase? Am I just going to hit follow or subscribe? Right. And that's where we want to kind of have that offer ready for them. Now, on social media, it's a little bit different because we're not uh, walking them directly through a very obvious sales funnel. Uh, we're doing this through our content strategy. So if we are trying to promote something on our social media channels, we want to have about 20% of that content should be promotional. Is that, you know, 20% saying like, hey, sign up for my newsletter or 20% being like, hey, buy my art. And kind of once we, we reach them at that decision stage, then we get into that action stage. So this is at that bottom of the sales funnel. This is the easiest spot to reach people because this is where people really want to convert. So now they know who you are, right? So that, that potential lead is now your client or maybe they're a new subscriber. They've agreed to follow you. And, you know, that's your brand name, right? So if we can find people at the top stages, we're really increasing our visibility. Now, uh, does that make sense to everybody? Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Just reading that now. There's not a, a stop uh, a slide for that. So let me just uh, pull off my screen share here and stop sharing. Let's wait for that to uh, kick off. There we go. All right, I'm back. You get to see my face again. All right, so I'm getting a yes. So if that if that kind of a, this is a very basic rendition of that sales funnel, but essentially we need to hit these four steps in order to actually have a fulsome strategy. So as we think about you know the why we're doing these things, we really want to think about how to reach that potential market in each one of those steps. I say the steps again. Yeah, absolutely. So number one is awareness. Okay. Uh, number two, uh, that is interest. So that's that's the client is doing research now, right? Uh, number three is a decision. So the client's going to decide if they want to sign up or subscribe. And uh, number four is that action stage. All right. And and right now, you know, I'm kind of doing this verbally because we're going to get into doing uh, a little bit of an audit of a social media account and, and several accounts here. Um, and this is going to make a little bit more sense. Oh, yeah, that is a fun graphic. I didn't even notice that. That's great. Oh, wrong side. There we go. <laughs> That's uh, really wonderful. All right. So now we, we, we have kind of a better understanding about uh, what I'm about to talk through next. So now we're going to go right into doing a social media audit. So uh, Catherine, uh, Catherine, are you on the call today? Uh, forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but Trembath, Catherine Trembath. Fabulous. All right. So Catherine, um, we're going to go through your Instagram account. You know, you uh, you agreed to uh, do this with me before. So uh, I hope you're excited. And I uh, Presenter, if you don't mind just uh, um, unmuting Catherine so she can uh, talk and participate. Uh, Catherine, if you're comfortable, of course. Hi. Hello. How do I? Oh, there I am. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. This is nice to meet you. <clears throat> nice to meet you as well. Uh, so welcome. I am super excited to chat with you today. 
Um, and really, before we, we get started, I've got some questions that I want to ask you directly. Is that OK? okay. Yeah. All right. So um, what do you hope to accomplish online? What, what is your biggest desire for online? Um, <laughs> you don't have to know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not, I don't have a big online presence, but I guess if I were to, it would be for people to get to know me, um, to get to know my work, um, and to feel comfortable connecting with me about things I'd have to offer because I teach and I have, um, work for sale. So those, that would be it. I feel like, cause I only have an Instagram account right now professionally. So I feel like Instagram is one of those kind of friendly ones where you get to know the person. Yeah. And you're totally right. So we go on Instagram because we want to feel inspired, right? Yeah. So, um, all of this, uh, the market research that Instagram does see, says that the businesses on Instagram, their their potential clients say that they're trendy and uh, they're easy to connect with. And that's kind of what we like about Instagram. We get to curate our feeds. We see things that bring us joy. So mm -hmm. whereas, you know, a platform like Facebook, that's all based off of reaction and engagement. So not necessarily good all the time. If we react with something on Facebook out of, you know, anger or like, ah, oh, you know, I, I didn't like that. But the minute we, you know, give it a like, give it a thumbs down, give it an angry face, the algorithm goes, you want to see more of this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Whereas uh, with Instagram, when we start reacting and, and you know engaging with posts in Instagram, it's going to show us more of these things, right? We only have that like button, so if we like it, then uh, that that algorithm is going to start matching and showing you more and more of the stuff that you actually want to see. We want to feel inspired here on this platform. So you mentioned that you do uh, you do classes, Catherine. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more, kind of, about your artistic practice and and the types of things you offer? Yeah, I um I offer drawing classes actually for people of all different ages and abilities. Awesome. That's really exciting. All right. So and my my number one question right now is do you have uh with your Instagram account, is it a professional account? Are you able to yes, get uh insights from that account? Perfect. Yes. All right, that's great. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen again and uh we're actually going to look directly at your account right now. You're, you're acting shy. No, don't. It's great. You're, you're doing great. <laughs> okay. All right. There we are. All right. So one great thing that I see about this account is, um, oh, I'm flashing. Am I flashing on the screen as well? Yeah. Huh. All right. Let me... Well, let me stop the share. I'm just going to try again so it stops doing this uh, weird, weird flashing thing. All right, let's try again. All right, that's better. Much more stable now. Perfect. All right, Catherine. So one of the things that I like is I see you're posting. Um, you've got a lot of content on here. Right, so you've obviously taken the time and you've curated your feed to offer a very specific purpose, right? We've got, you know, some some studio sales. We see some other artwork here. It looks like for a while you're putting everything on this nice wooden background. Okay, that's great. Now, one thing we know about Instagram is uh, they have changed up the way the algorithm works, uh, you know, within kind of the last, uh, you know, six months. So we can actually rank for keywords on this particular platform as well. Now, prior to this, we were always just ranking for what we called hashtags. So a lot of people go, hashtags, ah, what are those? Uh, we know kind of what they are. You know, we hear jokes about them all the time, but the, the number one question is how exactly do we use hashtags? Right, so hashtags and keywords are very similar in the sense that we need to find ones that have volume. And by volume, I mean, if we're creating our own, you have to think that nobody else is really gonna look at that because we've just created it. So unless we're trending on like Twitter or something, cause we've, you know, teamed up with an organization and created this hashtag for an awareness campaign, people, people aren't looking at that hashtag, right? So if I'm gonna go and I'm gonna, you know, move through some of your posts, one of the things that I notice right away is we're not using hashtags on the account. Right? So that means people are going to have a really, really, really hard time trying to find you. 
Okay, so I'll just, uh, we're getting great engagement. So almost every post you have, somebody is, is engaging with you. So that's fantastic. But if we wanna reach a larger potential audience, we really wanna make sure that uh, we've got hashtags and they need to be included in our actual uh, caption now. So before we could kind of throw those into a comment after, uh, they did switch up the algorithm. They do say that hashtags in your actual post in the caption uh, do perform better. Okay. So in terms of um, kind of that hashtag, I just wanna kind of show you all how that, uh, how that works. So uh, I'm gonna just, type in a random hashtag here. Well, let's see what comes up. Uh, let's do hashtag art for sale. Okay, mm. so you see when I type this in into my desktop, I'm getting all of these numbers. So this is telling me how many posts actually exist on that hashtag, right? So in terms of volume, if we pick a hashtag that has too much, that means we're gonna get buried really quickly. So I'm just gonna click on this hashtag. It's a massive, we'll wait for that to load here. Perfect. So the way this works, we're going to know how many posts are at the top, and then we'll get our top posts here. So these are the ones that have the most engagement and likes. So well, let's click on this one. Let's see what happens. Oh, they've got it hidden. Uh, but typically, if uh, we have a lot of engagements and likes on them, uh, they're always going to be at the, the top here. So we've got uh, nine posts, and then we start seeing our most recent. So this is likely where uh, if you start using hashtags, you'll start showing up. So under most recent, one of the things we'll notice is that this was posted one minute ago, okay? mm. And if I go to the next post, we're gonna see this was posted two minutes ago, right? So the volume that people are posting onto this hashtag is quite rapid. So that means that our content is likely to also get buried really quickly. So we really wanna make sure that when we are choosing the hashtags that we wanna use, we don't want them that are too high volume. Otherwise, nobody can find us because uh, it's there and it's gone. You know, downside of Instagram is if we use a hashtag, then all of a sudden uh, it can get buried really quickly. And, you know, we can find ourselves in just one day so far down the list that people will never reach it. Right. So now if we go and we, we pick a hashtag that has maybe a little less posts, let's use this one here. So art for sale online. Okay. We're going to find that uh, we still have our top posts. Absolutely. But as we go down, we're gonna see that the posting frequency is a little less, so like 16 minutes ago. So now we actually have an opportunity to have our content shown, right? And, and with these hashtags, we're gonna know that if I am following these hashtags, this is how I'm gonna start seeing your content. If I'm using these hashtags, this is how I'm gonna start seeing your content. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So, hey, I clicked on this one and we see all the hashtags that this person is using obviously all to do with their art style. So in terms of kind of what we wanna put on our own posts is we wanna have, you know, uh, I wanna say nine to 11 hashtags. So typically I say take nine that we're using regularly. So we're gonna use those same hashtags over and over and over again. And then we're gonna swap out, you know, two to four that we're gonna use that are unique to each post that we make. So am I posting, you know, uh, a picture of flowers I painted? Sure, we'll add some, some flower hashtags. Am I posting a picture of a dog? Let's add a dog hashtag. Um, am I posting about classes? We're gonna make sure that that, uh, that hashtag block is really heavy on uh, other artists who wanna connect with classes. Am I posting my own paintings? Is that painting for sale, right? So that all comes into play when we're deciding what hashtags we're going to use. Okay, the other thing that we wanna think about is the actual captions that we're using in that post, right? So sketchbook challenge, hey, that's, that's great. So people, uh, people search that all the time. Um, you know, there's also really popular things like uh, hashtag uh, WIP uh, or work in progress. Some people use work in progress art. Well, I see the chat is lighting up. Let me just take a look at that. Ah, so uh, the, the putting hashtags in the first comment actually is outdated. So they've changed the algorithm and uh, the CEO of Instagram has said, you are better off to actually put your hashtags in your caption. So the reason being is if I put, uh, if I don't use hashtags and I put that hashtag into uh, a comment, sure, it used to serve a purpose of engagement, but now they're saying that's your own account where it's not going to work. And if somebody happens to get that post before you make that uh, actual comment, then you're kind of losing that social media juice. Whereas if we put our content out with those, uh, those hashtags right in that caption, then we can go ahead and uh, we can uh, get into that search, that algorithm right away. 
Okay. Now, if we want to follow a hashtag, so it's as easy as following an account. So we'll just do uh, art for sale online. We'll head back there. And it's just this follow button. So if we're on a mobile phone, it's the same thing. We search for the hashtag by doing the pound symbol and then search for what it is you want, click follow. And that way, uh, next time you hit that little home screen, uh, you're going to see uh, a whole bunch of different people's posts. So whoever is using this hashtag, you're gonna start seeing their content. So it's a, it's a great way to kind of expand uh, what else you're kind of looking at online. Okay, so uh, next thing uh, let's, we can chat about is I see you're using uh, the story feature. So that's great, you've, you've got these uh, highlights. So the highlights are fantastic because that makes it up uh, like a micro blog. So someone comes onto your profile and go, what's this person about? They get to see us through that little micro blog of our account. So they don't have to scroll back through, you know, all of these posts to try to figure out who you are. Um, the other nice thing about using your stories and, and these uh, highlight reels is we can kind of go off brand a little bit. And this is how we tell our story without, you know, you know, messing up what our, our profile looks like. So I see that you're very on brand. You know, you're, you're not talking a lot about yourself in these posts. So uh, a great place to do that is in your stories. You know, let people get to know you that way. Okay. Now, one thing that we also have to think about on uh, Instagram in particular and also Facebook is these algorithms are geared to match people um, depending on what they like. And, and by that, I mean what medium they like. Uh, IG stories. Yes, I can uh, chat about that in a, a moment here. Absolutely. Um, so we also want to think, uh, just, just before we get to that, um, we want to talk about uh, in our actual feed, because so the feed, uh, that's these posts down here, this block of all of these three across. Um, we want to make sure that we're using both uh, pictures and also video. So if you're a person and you find yourself watching a lot of video on Instagram, um, that algorithm is just going to start showing you more and more video. And you're actually going to see less and less photo content. Because again, it wants to show you what you want. So if we're thinking about our large market and they, how they want us to follow, even these 225 people that are currently following you, they may not be seeing your content if uh, we're not uh, meeting them with a the medium that they like. So it is always a good idea to have both uh, photos and also video. So. How do we post a story? Okay, so a story is, is done uh, on a mobile phone. Uh, it's a little bit different, but we're always looking up top. We see this little uh, plus symbol. So we wanna click there and then it's going to uh, give us an option. So we can't do it on a computer. It just says, hey, we're gonna do a photo, but we're all we're gonna do on a desk, on our mobile phone is choose story. So if any of you have your phones open right now, we open our Instagram app, we look for that little plus button, we tap it, and it's gonna say, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna do a post, a story, a reel, or a live, okay? You pick story, and then it's gonna come up with a gallery. And say, do you wanna do a photo you've already made? Or we're gonna tap our camera. And then we can actually put you know, video filters on it, uh, we can put text on it, we can share a link uh, using a, a sticker. So lots of things that we can do with our stories. Now, great thing about our stories is those stories are going to disappear within 24 hours. So when I say when we kind of go off brand, I don't mean like you know, we're as ourselves are going off brand, but we're gonna give our audience you know, a little bit of a different engagement style. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to, you know, talk about it behind the scenes. You know, maybe I'm going to show how messy I got painting in my studio. Oh, did I spill paint on the floor? Oh, no, that's terrible. But I'm going to make a video about it anyway, so people can share uh, my paint. <laughs> um, those stories, uh, because they disappear within 24 hours, they're going to get archived. And those archives are how we get these highlight reels. Okay, so uh, we can find that in kind of the settings area of our Instagram account. So again, if you're following along, if you have stories, um, we're just gonna kind of uh, head over to your profile. So make sure you're on your actual profile. We're gonna tap uh, the little settings uh, button. So those three lines, and then we're gonna see an archive, okay? And that archive button, we're gonna see either posts up at the top or there'll be a downward selector. And then we can see our stories archive. Okay, so uh, once we find our stories, uh, then we can go ahead and just tap the story we wanna share and it's gonna say, add this to a highlight or create a new highlight, okay? And then again, that's how we, we come up with these. We can also use uh, programs like Canva to design little um, photos for each of these if we wanted to. I like the way yours look though, I wouldn't change that. Uh, they're very personable and very artsy. All right, so 
now that we we've kind of have an idea of um, stories versus posts, uh, Instagram also has another option, which is called Reels. So uh, Instagram Reels are basically a kind of Instagram's own version of TikTok videos. So those short, you know, 30 second to one minute videos. Um, you're confused about how the stories are showing up when they disappear after 24 hours. Absolutely. So if I uh, post a story and it, you know, this will light up this little circle to let my viewers know that they have a story. Um, let's see if I have any people. So everybody here has a story, all these different ones. Uh, if I click this story here, I'm going to see what they're posting. Okay. Awesome. So in 24 hours, this post is going to disappear unless this person chooses to perform an action. Okay. And by choosing to perform an action, uh, that means I'm going to actually make a conscious effort to uh, create this highlight reel. Okay. Does that make more sense? Fabulous. All right, so if I make, if I do absolutely nothing with that story, they're, they're going to be gone again. What's the advantage of doing something that disappears? That's a great question. Honestly, it's about engagement. So once we get people to follow us, we want them to keep following us, you know, and it is much easier to post a story than it is to design a post, okay? So post takes time. We need to, you know, have our hashtags. We need to have something to actually post. We need to make a caption. Um, whereas a story, I can throw that up, you know, it can be 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, it can be uh, somebody else's post, okay? Maybe I wanna take this and I say, wow, this is really cool. I wanna share this to my own stories. I can click this little button here and I can choose to actually share it to my own story and say, hey, check out this cool art from this person, right? Or I can also just send this as a direct message. So click it and it says, what, where do I wanna send it? Now, again, desktop, we're limited, but if you're on your mobile phone, you're going to be able to see something that says uh, share, share to story, right? Otherwise, I can go ahead and I can just uh, send this to an individual person, just click it, write them a message and say, check out this cool painting. Okay, I hit send. Okay, now we've just, uh, we're just creating awareness now. So by doing that, uh, that's the first step of the sales funnel. Now that person is now going to get that post and go, oh, cool, I'm going to go check out this person's account. Um, what if you're trying to add your Facebook and IG page at the same sign, or should they be separate? Well, so if, if we make a post, um, we always have that option to cross post. Now, I don't particularly like that option from doing it in the way uh, Instagram gives us. The reason being is we want to treat each of these platforms differently. Okay, so we, we want to make sure that um, we use each platform in, in the way they're designed to be used. So Instagram, we can't share links, right? Instagram, uh, if we have a website, we're going to put it uh, in our bio up here and we're going to just drive traffic there. Um, whereas on Facebook, we can share links so we can interact with our audience different. And on Facebook, hashtags, eh, they're not really a thing. You know, Facebook kind of tried to introduce that a couple years ago and didn't really kick off. So we can just search and search keywords on Facebook uh, rather than having to use hashtags. So uh, a better example to do that would be to set up your, your meta business manager and cross post uh, from there. So that is uh, scheduling your content in advance. So that also helps fulfill that algorithm because, you know, people like to tell us that we need to post every single day. And that is true if we want to see a, a, like super rapid growth. But if we're individuals or we're arts organizations um, and we don't have a lot of time on our hands, creating content in advance is super important, right? That way we, we reach that consistency level. And then we use a scheduling tool to make sure that that consistency is met every single week. Because what we don't want to do is we want to make a post and then leave our account for a couple of weeks because then we start losing that, that juice from that algorithm. And then we make our next post and we kind of have to start over again. Whereas if I you know schedule three posts a week, I go, okay, I'm in these people's feeds at least three times a week already. Uh, now they're coming to my profile. I've got stories going. So now they're actually interacting with me and I'm I'm not going to lose my followers. What is the alternative if one cell phone only has talk and text and is never used? So you can definitely post um, and use these tools from the, the meta business suite. So I've got that open here. So I'm just going to switch tabs here and gears just for a minute. So the meta business suite is going to allow us to uh, create a post from our desktop. So before um, we had to use Instagram, on our mobile phones, that is changing. The desktop app does let us do actual posts now. We don't have all of the features, 
Uh, we also don't have all of the features in the Meta Business Suite, but if I hit Create Post, it's going to pop up and it's going to show me a way that I can post to both platforms. So I'm going to choose post to in Facebook or Instagram. Okay. And then what's going to happen is I can do my post details here. So I'm going to, yes, customize that post for Instagram and Facebook. Facebook, uh, if I have a link to share, I'm going to put it near the top of my post. Uh, I'm going to uh, make the text slightly different. If I'm sharing a video, it can be up to two minutes. Um, if I'm going on Instagram, I'm designing my post again differently because I need to put my hashtags on there. And, you know, Instagram videos, uh, one minute is usually kind of the max uh, for, for view time on that. And then we have our scheduling options. So I can save it, come back to this later. I can schedule this to go out the week or I can just publish it now. All right, and I think that's, I think that's all the questions uh, from that now. All right, so uh, now that we kind of have a better uh, understanding of uh, Instagram in particular, um, any other questions before I kind of um, I move on? Uh, and we're just gonna take a look at an artist that I've worked with in the past that's kind of showing up uh, throughout Google as well. Uh, talk about stories versus reels, absolutely. All right, uh, stories versus reels, all right. I'm just gonna head over uh, to my art page here and I'm just gonna kind of give you uh, a little look here. So uh, again, stories, they disappear within 24 hours. I can, you know, go and I, I can click on my story. Again, this is my highlight that comes up. Okay, I'm telling a story through this. Now, the only time people are going to see this is if they already follow my account. Okay, reels are searchable. So if I come over to reels, and uh, I, I look at this reel, hopefully it doesn't play loud. Um, basically, uh, if people uh, we can search this with hashtags, okay? So there's actually a whole spot, especially if we're using the app, that we can come and we can go ahead and um, we can actually browse other people's reels. So the algorithm works a little bit differently here. Does that, does that kind of make sense? I feel like I may have rambled a little bit there. I'm not seeing any objections, so I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> You'll have to go and watch the video. It's uh, uh, part of making reels too is a really easy way to start making reels is find what's trending. And uh, it's hard to do on a desktop because we don't have uh, we don't have the, all the abilities on here. But if we're watching reels uh, on our mobile phone, so again, if anyone's on the call today, you've got your mobile phone open. We're looking for that little button on the bottom menu there and it looks like a play button. So if we're looking on the screen here, this little play button, That'll be on your mobile device as well. If we click that, we're going to see reels from a whole bunch of different people. Okay. And uh, once we're kind of in, in that uh, setting, we can see what's trending by looking in the bottom right hand corner. There's going to be a little square there. And if we're looking at that little square, we tap it and it's going to say a real audio or trending audio. So if we find something that's trending, we can recreate it for our own market and uh, it'll, go, it'll go quite fast. I don't know. Can you hear that? I don't know. I can't hear it. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely go ahead and, and watch it um, if you want to know what it's about. Just on my my Instagram account. But uh, so if we're, um, let me see. I'll just stop sharing here, and we're going to take a look at the mobile device. Perfect. All right. So we should see my face again. Hello, everyone. I'm back. All right. So if we're looking at my mobile device, whoop, there's a little square over here in this bottom corner. <laughs> and if we're touching that little square, we're going to see audio that's trending. Okay. And, and basically, if we want to go through these reels, we're just going to scroll up, scroll down. We're going to get new reels. And if we get the original audio, it's going to show us everybody else that's made a reel using that audio. Okay. And from there, we'll see at the top there, it says save audio. We can save that and we can recreate a reel with that audio that's already trending. So that way we don't have to reinvent the, 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 the wheel, basically. And if something's already trending, that means we can kind of hop on that. And uh, it's a lot easier to, to get all those likes and follows that way uh, because the content's already proven to work. We're just recreating it kind of in our own image. All right, so 
I'm going to move uh, just away from Instagram and uh, I'm just mindful of the time here. So I don't want to take up too much time. Now I can either, uh, I'll give you the audience a choice here. I can move on and we can chat a little bit about uh, websites um, or you can just keep chatting. And if you have more questions to ask, then, then we can just keep going through Instagram and just learn how to use this particular platform uh, to, to a bigger advantage. And, and, and Catherine, what do you think? Have I answered uh, have I answered uh, questions for you? How, do you think you have a better understanding kind of of your Instagram account? Um, yes, I do. I, it's been great. There's a lot to learn, so I appreciate that you kind of say something and then you stop and let us have a chance to process it. So it's good. No, I thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Awesome. That's great. Great to hear. All right. And then I, I saw somebody in the chat uh, said they have a Facebook question. We talk about ads. Oh man, I wish that I could talk about all of this stuff at once. <laughs> Do people actually sell paintings from Instagram? Yes, all the time. Now, if we want to use Instagram to sell, honestly, the easiest way to do that is we need a website. Um, if we have a website that actually has online shopping, then we can just go ahead and activate that Instagram shopping account. Um, without that, it's going to be very hard to sell online. Okay. Um, all right, uh, I'm getting a couple here uh, talking about website, please. So uh, as much as I want to talk about ads, that is a big, broad topic that I will probably take much more time than we have. So we're going to look at a website here. Now, um, we're going to use uh, my dear friend, uh, Janet, because she has put so much work into this website. And we're just first going to start just with a Google search. Okay, so again, this is a branded search, so she should show up. All right. Um, but what we're finding here is number one hit, just like I said it would happen. I searched the brand name and we're getting the brand right at the top. So this is Janet Strayer Art coming down. We're, we're seeing the image search. So yes, if we put in content. Oh, we can't see our screen. Oh, thanks. Here, let me go back. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I will share my bad. All right. So we should be looking at uh, the Google search now. All right, so the number one hit, I searched Janet Story Art. So here's what I'm getting, janetstory.com. All right, coming down, we're seeing image results. So this is a part of the presence. Any any uh, image that I'm putting on the website, I want to make sure I have something called alt text that's for screen readers and also can be used for SEO. It's a description of the image because images can rank. And then coming back down, uh, any uh, listings that Janet has listed her website on are also coming up. So this online presence here, okay? And because Janet has a studio, Janet is also eligible to be on Google My Business. So not all artists are going to be eligible for that platform, but if you welcome the public to your studio, offer classes at a physical location that is yours and doesn't change, you might be eligible to use Google My Business. And that is great for what's called local SEO. And SEO is search engine optimization, okay? It gives us some information about the artists and there's some things that we can do to kind of, um, you know, bulk this up so we can add products to it and, and help our search. Now, if we're looking at an actual website, uh, that website needs to tell a story, okay? So first, you know how we were talking about our goals, what goals do we want? Well, this particular artist has several goals, okay? She wants people to know who she is. She's an a international shown uh, artist that has done uh, exhibits kind of all over the place. Janet has an online store, so we've got a store here. Uh, we want to see the whole artwork series. and she also wants people to sign up for her newsletter. Okay. So all of that is taken care of right on the home page. So that home page that you have, we shouldn't have a lot of noise on it, but we should have content on it. So number one thing I see uh, artists doing as an oversight is we don't have enough content on our individual portfolio pages. We're just like, hey, I'm an artist. Here's some paintings. So we want to uh, make sure that we have content because this is how we rank. So if I have no content on my website, we have to think that the search engines can't show you to anybody because you can't match a search, right? So um, that's where those keywords come into play, just like content in this case is words. Yes, absolutely. So uh, keywords uh, and content are very important together for websites, whereas social media, it's that content and hashtags. So same concept though. We want to make sure that we're, we're hitting people at that top of the sales funnel. Number one thing people do wrong with our websites is we just use our brand name over and over and over and over again. But again, if people don't know our brand name, we're missing out on tons of potential searches. 
Okay, another thing we want to make sure is, is when we have our websites, are they accessible, right? So what we know about the internet right now is that we want to design with equity in mind. Okay, we're not thinking about uh, equality anymore. We're not trying to reach the, the largest possible market. We're trying to design with equity because if, if everyone can use the site, it's just naturally better for everybody. Okay, so uh, when, I, when I talk about accessibility, some of the things that we wanna keep in mind are what kind of fonts are we using? Okay, and by fonts, I mean, are they, is it cursive, is it curly? This font is very easy to read, right? Um, let's talk about the justification of text. You know, screen readers have a really hard time uh, with text that is not left aligned, right? Um, one thing about accessibility is does it resize correctly? So if I take and on my browser, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in to 200%, doop, 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 all the way in. All right, oh, 250. So you see here that it hasn't, it hasn't resized. Now I'm not missing much, but we could do a better job of resizing, right? What should happen is we should see a mobile menu happen, okay? Uh, the other thing we wanna think about is uh, how colorful our website is. Can you show some obvious keywords on Janet's page? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, Jan most of the keywords here are gonna be coming from the blog because if we can you know, create blog content, uh, that means that we're going to rank for, you know, we can potentially rank for hundreds of different keywords, right? But, you know, we've got Art Studio, we've got Saturna Island, we've got the actual brand name, we've got Contemporary Art, okay? So whether or not these have volume, well, that would take some, some hashtag research. And there's lots of tools out there that we can do that. Just type in keyword research tool and things are going to come up on Google. You know, that's a, a huge SEO learning, which again, I could probably take a full hour and just chat with you all about how to find keywords. Um, but when we have a strategy, in Janet's case, that also involves blogging, right? We come over to the Creative Knife News and um, basically we can click on a blog and we can see that every single blog is going to have different words in it and it's going to address a, a little bit of a different audience. So depending on what I'm searching, I might find Janet through this blog post, okay? You know, what is, what is a style? So she's, she's doing that question and answer, you know, ask a question, give the audience the answer and if somebody you know types in what is an artistic style janet might come up we never know right so now we're not now we're not ranking just for the brand name now we're ranking for what is an artistic style right something that's kind of totally left field that we maybe naturally wouldn't have thought about okay so we're gonna we're gonna head back to the home page again and uh in terms of accessibility we also really want to think about color too so uh some very common oversights with websites is we develop these style guides that aren't necessarily uh accessible in terms of color contrast okay so think of somebody that may have low vision or think of somebody that might be uh, have color blindness right that's very very common and if we have things say like uh, these buttons that uh maybe the maybe it's a blue color and it's not very obvious it's a link um, it might be hard for that uh, person that has now landed on your website to perform an action because they can't actually see it, right? So they might miss out. They might leave really quickly. Okay, so uh, that's kind of the uh, the basics of, of websites. Um, we just want to make sure that we can, you know, I say it's a, it's a tab indicator. So if I land on a website and I hit the tab on my keyboard, you see this comes up, it says skip to main content. So I can just kind of jump through things and I can see where the content starts. Or I can uh, tab again, and what it's going to do is it's going to see the blue line that highlights over everything as I move. So I can actually cruise around the website, and it's going to find me all the links. Um, so that's also a really important thing to have on your website. So some people with outdated websites, they don't have this functionality. And again, you can be missing out on a potential audience because they just can't use the site. It's not functional. Maybe we have too many big graphics, like moving videos on our site. So if I'm on a mobile phone, it's just sucking too much data. Um, and then and then they can't actually load the website because it takes too long. Uh, okay, another question here. Recommendation for a DIY website builder. All right, so uh, full disclosure, I'm a Wix partner, so I'm always going to recommend Wix. Uh, I love it. It's uh, You can get started for free um, and without uh, a lot of knowledge because they have three different versions. They've got an ADA builder where you just, you know, your AI helps you. They create you a basic site and you're off to the races. Eh, it's not the best way to go, but it can get you out there. Um, or uh, we can use a Wix uh, builder. 
uh, that can go ahead and we can start designing a little bit. Or there's something called Wix Editor X, which is much more advanced, uh, but we can start uh, doing our own you know, coding uh, with that and set breakpoints for, for different device sizes as well. So uh, other than Wix, uh, another popular one uh, for a, a do-it-yourself, no coding knowledge, um, we could use Squarespace. Again, we're stuck to the templates there, but it is quite easy to get started. Um, and then also if we, if we don't have a budget, so say we have no money, but we want to get started, we're going to go over to weebly.com. So I'll just uh, go there. This is uh, squares. So Weebly, let's type that in. Basically you can get started for free on this platform. Um, so if money is an issue, again, not great if we're trying to really uh, sell online, uh, if, we, if this is our only option. Uh, but it is a starting place. Uh, other than that, uh, again, my top one here is Wix.com, so we'll head over there. There's lots of options to get you started and uh, tons and tons of different templates as well. All right, so we're almost coming to the end here. Um, so I, I uh, it's kind of uh, thank you all for your participation. Um, this has been excellent. I'm so happy that you've uh, all been asking questions and Oh, we go till 12.30. All right, great. I've got more time then. That's amazing. Is Wix compatible with using PayPal buttons? Yes, absolutely. So um, one of the nice things about this platform, which is why I recommend it, is A, it's easy to use. We don't have any coding knowledge that we need to know. It's got a front end kind of drag and drop builder. Um, and we can totally, it can grow with us. So not only does it have an amazing CRM in the back end that we can you know, make sales through, uh, organize our client base, um, we can grow with it. So if we want to take appointments, we can do that. Top three tips as a brand new artist to create sales online. Well, <laughs> getting your presence out there. So we want to show up on all these uh, social media con uh, areas. We want to have our website and we want to make sure that if we want to make sales online, that our website shows that. Okay, so in terms of websites, we want to talk about kind of um, one step. Right, so how can we do things in one step? So I'm gonna show you uh, kind of my artist website here. So I'm just gonna type it in to Google. Okay, I'm gonna come up my little search results. There we go. So kind of the first thing. So if you uh, have the ability to meet customers and actually install the artwork or paint the artwork or bring customers to your, um, your particular studio, you want to have this Google My Business. So in terms of what we call local SEO, this is going to be the best thing to help you drive traffic, okay? Now, uh, for myself, I can set this up and you see I have products here so people know exactly what I offer right away without even leaving Google. Do you think Facebook and Insta are adequate if you say sell on Etsy? Okay, so if you sell on Etsy, it's kind of a whole different ball game. Again, keywords, super important on Etsy. Um, but yes, absolutely, we can, we can, it's called cross posting. So again, if we have a strategy and say, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I have a website, I have Google My Business, I have an Etsy, we wanna have a content strategy that hits every single one of those platforms, right? So maybe I create a blog post for my website and then I take an excerpt and I share it on Facebook and social media. And then I take an excerpt of that and then I make a post on my Etsy uh, with the product that I'm trying to push, okay? So everything is very similar but we are designing each of these different uh, little bits of our content for each different uh, platform that we're actually on, okay? Now, again, if we're, we're going back to that uh, top three tips as a brand new artist to create sales online. So A, it's just, it's getting our, our content out there in a way that people can find us. So if I'm going on a website here, I hope you can tell me what I do. What kind of artist am I? Oh, I went right to my about page. Let's go to my home page. Right, you can tell right away what kind of artist I am. I'm gonna paint you a mural, right? Now, in terms of one touch, I should be easily able to go, yeah, reserve your mural, boom, click on that. And uh, I'm gonna go and, and book you and to come paint, paint a mural for me. Now, if you're selling online, we change that button to like buy my print, uh, purchase a canvas. So this is called a call to action or a CTA. So these are very important when it comes to websites. We always wanna have those CTAs that drives that action. Does that make sense? All right, I'm not having uh, any, uh... <laughs> perfect, that's great. 
All right, so uh, we're, we're just going to take a little detour here. I'm going to head back to uh, Janet here. Because Janet's doing a really great job uh, on all of the channels. And I just want to kind of show you what that looks like. Because one of the things that people do wrong when we're trying to do our digital presence is we get really scattered. We, we want to have a different name for every single platform. So if you think that, say, okay, Janet is on Instagram. Let's find Janet here. Okay, perfect. My name or her name, boom, nice and easy. I know how to find that. All right, if I go on to Facebook here and I search for Janet, boom, it's the same name over and over and over again. So if we can't, if it has to be a little bit different, that's okay. We kind of, you know, it's a big, these are big platforms. There's a lot of different people on these platforms. So we really want to make sure that uh, we, we try to get as close as possible. And you see here that we have this little at symbol at to Janet Strayer Art. Ideally, what we would want is we want this at symbol to match this as well, right? Because when people, uh, when these match, I can go ahead and I can jump onto Google and I can just uh, search like this. Okay, and then what should come up is the same web hit. So I should get a Facebook account. Um, and see, I'm missing an Instagram account because it's slightly different. So this might show up later, but ideally what we want. If our ads, yeah, absolutely, we'll, we'll take a look at that. And if, if we use the same name on all these platforms, you know, things like uh, the search engines will reward us because then they're going to start finding these profiles and they're going to put them on things like our Google My Business for us. So we can't do this ourselves. This comes from having a presence that kind of matches throughout uh, the internet. All right, so uh, let's navigate to that website here. Just bear with me. It's awesome. All right, so first thing that I see, boom, we have a call to action. Shop now. That's fantastic. Upcoming events, behind the lens. That's great. So we have uh, all of these are, are already great things, right? So. Um, now we're, we're giving that, that client a choice of how to connect with us. Things that we might love. Perfect. Products right on the home page. Well, that's amazing. Uh, Brianna, how long have you had your website for? Six weeks. All right. So uh, that is not a very long time in terms of uh, being online. Now, have you made a sale from the website yet? You know, I would expect the answer to be no, but like, hey, correct me if I'm wrong, because it looks pretty great. Perfect. All right. So uh, typically, to make our first online sale, you know, according to platforms like Squarespace and Shopify, we need to have, you know, around 400 clicks. So once we get around that 400 clicks, that usually uh, helps us get to the point of making that first online sale. Now, if we're under that, that 400 click mark, uh, it might be, you know, we have to do some work to try to drive traffic and get more people to actually visit the site. Uh, Brianna, do you use um, Google Analytics on your website? Perfect. All right. Do you know if you're listed on the Google Search Console? Perfect. All right. So. Uh, the reason I like to talk about uh, Google Analytics and the Google Search Console is because Google is the largest search engine in the world. So if we're talking just about websites, we want to make sure that we have those things happening. Now, uh, one thing that I don't see is asking for uh, email addresses. So that is something, if we're going to make it an immediate improvement to the site, is just have a box somewhere that you can collect people's email addresses, even if you're not going to email them right now. The reason I say that is Google is going to change how their advertising and analytics works. And uh, basically, uh, by, by doing this change, um, we're going to lose out on a lot of analytics soon. Because right now, we have these little things called cookies. They're little tracking pixels that follow us around the internet. They learn our behaviors. And, you know, if you're an Apple user, you know that we can block those cookies. And, you know, changes that have happened in the European Union are saying, hey, those cookies are a little invasive. We're, we're getting too much data on our clients. So the world is going to soon shift into uh, back to that uh, email uh, sign up and newsletter to get the word out about things. So uh, pretty soon we're not going to have quite as much data on our customers. We'll still have a lot, but uh, it's just something to think about now uh, until that change actually happens. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. 
Fabulous. All right. So then the other thing that I, we see is we've got an FAQ page. So let's look at this. Perfect. So uh, Google loves FAQ pages. Okay. That's great. We're answering our, our main things here. That's fabulous. We've got a contact page. We've got hyperlinks that go. Uh, anytime we have a hyperlink, we should also try to have this underlined as well. That's an accessibility uh, issue. So um, again, if I have color blindness, I might not notice the color change that, has, that says this is a hyperlink. So always try to make sure that that is also a hyperlink, um, or sorry, underlined. And we really only want to reserve underlined text on our websites for links. So it should be both a color change and an underline, but min minor thing. Okay, we're going to head over to your contact page now. And let's take a look at this. Perfect. All right. Now, one other thing. All right, I'll come back to your Facebook question in just a minute. We've got lots of time left here, so that's great. So one thing about our uh, contact page here is, although we have a form, we should also have an email address. And we just have to think, we got to meet people where they're at. So sometimes these forms, what if something happens? Maybe it, it's not working. It's not, uh, you know, something happens and uh, it's, it's not fulfilling, right? We hit submit and nothing happens. It's broken for some reason. Um, if we have an email address, then I can still get in touch with you. Okay, and anytime we put our contact information on our sites, again, make sure it's a hyperlink. So if I'm using a mobile device, I can just click it with my finger and it brings up my email client. I can write you an email. So again, super minor. Yeah, exactly, right? So uh, you're reluctant that you'll you'll get a response. You don't know if they're actually gonna see that form. Sometimes these forms aren't set up correctly and they go to people's junk mail or um, there are all sorts of things. So we want a form 100%, but we also wanna have that secondary contact as well. All right, now one thing that I don't see is a blog, okay? So blogging takes a lot of time. However, blogging is a really great way to get all those keywords onto our site. So um, I'm gonna show you a site here. Uh, it's called Answer Answer the Public. There we go. So Answer the Public is called a search engine listening tool. Okay. So this is what uh, people are actually searching for. So I'm going to switch this over. We're going to go into Canada. Let's see if we can find Canada in this big long list here. So we always want to kind of search our own demographic. And uh, what should I search here? Let's search uh, how to paint with public. Okay, so it's going to do its thing, gather its little little data and its question. And hopefully it'll give us some data here. It's still loading. So while that loads, we'll just uh, keep talk chatting about the blog. So if we understand what people are actually searching for, it becomes really easy to actually create those blogs. Because again, we don't have to have you know thousands of words to have a blog, because again, that's super time consuming and we just really want to create art, but we do want people to find us. So uh, if we use tools like this, we can see what people are actually searching for. So it gives us this nice like little visual graph, like why paint with acrylic? So somebody actually made that search term and enough people have made that to actually show up in this list. So my myself as an artist, hey, I like painting with acrylic. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write 400 words about why I should paint with acrylic. Now, if my content is good enough, somebody might search why paint with acrylic and boom, my website comes up. Okay. Uh, I can pick other things. How do you, can you paint with acrylic on walls? Okay, I, I can go ahead and I can, I can go in, and start uh, designing my, my blog content around that. So again, these are real things people have searched for. So we, we're kind of taking out the guesswork here. Okay, then we're also, we're, we're gonna, this tool is also going to show us things like the, the proposition. So again, how to paint, how to paint acrylic without brush strokes. So maybe there's a, a type of leveling medium that we're gonna use or like flow trill. Uh, so I'm gonna write a whole blog about that answers just this question. Maybe I'm gonna take a couple of these questions and I'm gonna design a blog around that. Okay, now, now we get into comparisons. How to paint acrylic like watercolor. Again, we, we can talk about artistic uh, acrylic mediums and how we can use those acrylic mediums to get different effects. Right, so these, again, they don't have to be, 
these big topics. I know I, I talk about blogging a lot and people often get fearful. They go, oh, I, I don't have time for that. <laughs> so we use tools like this to help us make time. And again, if we have that clear strategy, I can create a blog that says, you know, how to paint acrylic step by step. And then I take that blog, I turn that into a social media post, I turn that into a Google My Business post, and it just goes out across all of my channels. And again, I'm increasing my digital visibility each time I do that. Okay. And we'll see that, you know, a tool like this is going to give us like a lot of results. So we're going to just see here like tons and tons and tons of results. So we have lots of stuff that we can choose from. Okay. So hopefully uh, that makes a little bit uh, more sense in, in terms of like going onto websites. Like that is why we want to use that blog. Blog is a good investment because content can be repurposed over and over. Yes, 100%. So that brings us back to that evergreen content. So this wasn't, I wasn't really planning on talking about evergreen content, but do we know what evergreen content is? It lasts a long time. You're right. It's like the leaves on an evergreen tree, right? I guess the, the, the pines, you know, they're always, they're always green. They don't fall off. We can reuse it again and again. So our evergreen content is content that we can, maybe we post it one January and then January rolls around again. And I go, I haven't posted that, you know, in a long time. It's still really relevant. I'm going to post it again. That way I'm not constantly searching to try to get more and more content and create more and more content all the time, right? Because if I'm, if I'm doing that, I'm spending all of my time just creating content. And I'm not actually uh, spending my time uh, creating and, and doing the things that I actually like, right? So, so we use those evergreen content to fulfill the algorithm again, but uh, we can repurpose it. You know, maybe we're just making little tweaks here and there. Maybe I've written a blog post and it's pretty timeless, but hey, something's happened, so I have to go change a couple lines in it to make it up to date, right? Just a really good way to make improvements on the site. Great. Does anybody else have a, have a website or a social media that they want me to, to look at? All right, somebody had a uh, Facebook question that I think I saw in there before. Do you want to ask your? Yes, that's me. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have a, a, um, a you know a Facebook page for my um, art business, Portraits by Lenore, um, but I, I also have, of course, a personal web uh, Facebook page, um, and I find that. Like when I started my um, business page, uh, I thought, oh, good, this will be the place for all my art. And, um, you know, I started getting some likes and then I, I discovered, I, you know, as I learned stuff, oh, I can share this to my um, personal page, which I thought would be a good idea because lots of people who are my friends are, are not people who've liked my professional page um, or my business page. But I was finding that the posts, uh, shared to my personal page from my uh, business page were not being viewed by um, friends. And so now I've started to create uh, distinct posts in my personal page because they get a lot more traction than um, sharing something from my business page to my personal page. Like, what, why, what is that? I just find that weird. Now, when you're sharing that post from your business page, are you adding a new caption with it? Or are you just hitting share um, and then no caption on your own? Good question. Every um, time, yeah every, yeah, every time we share that, we, we also want to make sure that we're adding our own unique caption to it to really capture that audience uh, of, of our current friends, right? So if I'm, you know, going to reshare your content, I'm going to say, hey, like, check out this cool portrait by Lenore. And then that post will come up with the photo and then we'll see that little blurb underneath about what you've written. Um, if we're sharing that, that content without that little blurb, sometimes people just, they just scroll right by because we're, we're designed to want to read that caption first on Facebook um, rather than see that photo first. Okay, so now, you think that uh, that's, Facebook that's is also, what's happening? Yeah. That, that could be. So again, it could be a couple different things that are happening there. It could just... Uh, could be time of the day. Maybe we're sharing at the wrong time of the day and people aren't actually online during that time of the day. Um, it could be that um, when we share from, you know, businesses uh, using the Facebook algorithm, their reach is actually quite low, right? So it's only about 2.2% for our own organic post. Um, whereas, you know, a, a platform like Instagram, 
you know, if I'm sharing from Instagram, I, I have the potential to reach around, reach around 9.4% of my audience. So it's a little bit higher, right? Um, but uh, I, I would try to share again, but create a unique caption uh, when you're cross posting and just see if that if that helps. Okay. I also do, I, I've been trying to remember to start from Instagram. So create a post on Instagram that gets shared to my personal page. And then I just create a separate page in my um, business Facebook page. I, I, you know, I don't know the right way to go about it, right? <laughs> Yeah, so so typically what we would want to do is we want to use something like the the Meta Business Suite, and we want to make sure that our Instagram is hooked up, and we want to make sure that our Facebook is hooked up, and then we just create that post uh, right from the Meta Suite, and it'll go out on both platforms. And again, we can schedule those to go out time of the day that are better for each platform because they are going to be different for each platform based off of the users that we have. Uh, and then from there, we'd want to share that content onto our our personal page. So that's kind of the flow we would want to do. Um, but if you're not seeing that engagement, yeah, that there, there could be other things going. So without doing kind of a, a deep dive and reviewing a whole bunch of analytics, it is hard to say exactly why that would happen. Um, but typically, yeah, we, we want to make sure that uh, we don't necessarily have to, sorry, uh, share directly from Instagram first and then out. Um, I actually prefer to do it right from the, the business suite on both platforms directly and then encourage people to reshare. Uh, just using the share button and sending that to a different group or a page or, you know, our personal profile, right. depending on how we're interacting. Okay. Thank you. So it's not, it's not a total answer, but. Uh, <laughs> All right. So uh, great artwork though. This is, this is great. Oh, thanks. Right. I see. Okay. Uh, let's see a couple different uh, websites in there. That's great. How important is it to have your IG photos look similar? Oh, tough one. All right. So we want to have consistency because we want to be able to develop kind of a brand uh, online. Now, uh, it really depends on what your brand is. So uh, all of us have seen those kind of lifestyle bloggers on Instagram where everything's like white with like green. <laughs> um, uh, so that's their brand. So what we don't want our Instagram to look like is just, I don't use the word, you know, like a hot mess, right? It just, when people land on that page, it needs to look congruent business. So uh, we don't need to go through and like brand every single photo that we're doing because then we start looking too salesy. And if you're, you know, like most people, we can smell when we're being sold to and most people don't like it, right? So specifically with Instagram, we really want to make sure that we're, we're forming a connection with the audience, right? And we don't do that if everything just looks bland and the same all the time. And you'll even see big brands you'll see that they're starting to move away from those like really uh, scripted, uh, we're using, you know, the same background on every single photo, right? Maybe they maybe they pick instead like six colors that they like to use in their brand palette and then, you know, they're gonna switch that up throughout their posts. All right, so hopefully uh, that works. All right, so we've got a couple more uh, websites in here. Let's Let's take a look. Let's take a look at a couple more websites. All right, so we've got, Fabulous. All right. All right. So you're using Weebly. So that's one of the ones that we, we chat about for a website builder. All right. So this is this is great. We're, we're showcasing the actual art here. Now, one of the things that I'm not seeing is a call to action. Right. So again, when we're using our websites uh, for a specific purpose, and again, uh, Patricia, feel free to like chime in here. Um, I should ask. Hey, there we go. Our Hi. call to action. So it was a little delayed, yeah. but it did show yeah, up. It's That's a great. pop up. Is that a good idea or a really terrible idea? So uh, pop ups are great. So it it we just have to make sure that they work on all devices. So if you haven't already, just load your website on your mobile phone. And make sure, yeah. stay on that homepage until that pop-up triggers and make sure you can get past it. Because uh, okay. sometimes on mobile devices, they hide these little Xs and then we get stuck and we can't actually go any further. So oh, as long as I'll the pop-up is functional, you. then we're okay. And if I okay. go ahead, let me just uh, inspect this. All right, so uh, using my inspection tool, I can Exit out of here. 
Let's see. But you see, I, and I don't know if this is going to be true on the mobile phones. We always want to check it. But you see how the kind of the artist kind of hangs down a little bit. And as I scroll down, we kind of lose that whole artist word here. Mm. Right. And so then I need to some make the, some uh, adjustments then. I would make some adjustments on the mobile. Yeah, the okay. mobile version. And same with the this uh, this text here, where you know one of the strengths to see the formatting is a little bit off on the mobile. And again, this could just be the developer yes. tool. So take this with a grain of salt, but do check it on your your own smartphone because you know most people are going to start accessing the internet on a on a tablet or a smartphone. Um, yeah. Especially for looking at analytics, we can usually see how people are accessing our websites. So we just want to make sure. Yeah, exactly what Jenny said. Sometimes these uh, platforms need a person to optimize for mobile because they say that they're mobile oh. optimized and that's great. We can view them, but there sometimes we have to do a little bit of extra work just to make sure. Um, okay. Another thing I would do here is I would say, oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you have a question? Um, just a quick question. Um, I have a domain name as a .ca and also a .com. Is it better to put um, promote your .com over the CA? Um, I am in Canada and, you know, after all, in Nanaimo, but would it be better to actually just use .com? Uh, that is a great question. So uh, we want to think of uh, the .c and the .com, exactly what you said, uh, based off of uh, democratic um, location, right? So we want to we mm. go by our location. Are you trying to sell to the whole wide world? Uh, chances are, uh, daily. You know, maybe, but again, that net bit might be pretty high. So I would say stick with your .ca and okay. then we're going to take the .ca is the primary domain. And if you can, we're going to point to that .com. So if I type in, you know, the domain name with the .com, I'll end up on the .ca. If I'm a oh, big brand okay. and say I'm shipping your little product, like drop shipping, then I would go for that .com because mm -hmm. I'd have a larger global reach. But when we're trying to, in terms of what's called local SEO, so that's that local region we're trying to sell to, uh, having yes. that .ca is, is always better. Okay, and there's a way to point to the .ca from the .com? Yeah, absolutely. So that happens uh, with our domain registrar. So if you're with Weebly, mm -hmm. uh, depends on where you bought your actual domain. Maybe that was GoDaddy, uh, Namecheap. Um, what we do um, is it's called a... a it was a $10.ca. Perfect. So uh, oftentimes those uh, those domain registers allow us to do what's a, it's called like a redirect or we can even change what's called the DNS records. Um, they usually have ways and instructions to do it online. Um, but if I, you know, let's type in my website here, I'll do a humanityandart.ca. I should get automatically redirected to the humanityandart.com. Right, so mm. both live. Okay, great. So that is, that check happens right at the, the domain level. Okay, and uh, another thing here, just a quick for a quick win, is we'd want to make sure that this contrast is a little bit higher. So again, if I am low vision, I might have a hard time accessing your mobile menu because uh, I might oh. not be able to see this gray text. Okay, so change the gray text into something bolder. Yeah, bolder color. Now it is a great idea to have uh, the link that we're currently on, so the home page, a different color because that uh, is a different form of accessibility. It shows me where I currently am on the website, but I okay. would also want to make sure that these ones are easier. Okay, all right, I'll make those adjustments. Thanks so much for the tips. Fabulous. All right, I've got. Uh, we're going to do that last website here. Oh yeah, I can stop screen sharing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Let's get that off. There we go. All right. So yeah, five five minutes left. So I just want to make sure that we're we're uh, I've answered everybody's questions, and we found that that uh, session has been informational for everyone. Fabulous. All right. Yeah, I, I tend to do that. I like to be an over explainer sometimes. So yeah, if anybody else has any uh, last minute kind of lingering questions, I would love to love to know. I guess. All right. Well, you know, uh, I always love connecting with other artists. So if uh, 
yeah, if you can uh, fill out the, the feedback form for uh, this particular Ask Me Anything, uh, that would be really wonderful. Uh, give that, uh, give Creative Coast your, your feedback so they can uh, sponsor more of these uh, types of webinars uh, with different uh, presenters and different subject matters. Now, if anybody wants to uh, connect with me directly, they can find me online um, by visiting mydigitalpresence.coach. So not .com or .ca, it's actually mydigitalpresence.coach or uh, on social media as well using mydigitalpresence.coach. Well, thank you everyone so much. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if we wanna uh, follow in, and uh, share with Creative Coast. You don't fill out surveys ever. Well, that's uh, totally up to you. Uh, you definitely never have to fill it out. Um, so Creative Coast, uh, make sure that we follow Creative Coast online. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram. Just type in Creative Coast, one word. Uh, please go ahead and like, follow, share our content. Uh, there is a lot of wonderful things happening with this organization. So if you see anything that you want uh, to share to one of your friends, just go ahead and hit that share button, little airplane if you're on Instagram and help us get the word out so we can connect with more and more artists like yourself. All right, everyone. Well, I just appreciate uh, everybody's participation today. Thank you so much, everyone, for showing up. All right, everyone. Well, again, thank you again. Uh, I do appreciate everybody's time today. Um, and again, make sure to follow Creative Coast. <laughs> everyone's brains are full. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead, follow Creative Coast. Please share our content with your friends. Uh, help us get the word out. Again, lots of really wonderful free things happening for artists. And if you haven't already, visit creativecoast.ca. Uh, take a look around, give us your email address so you can stay up to date on the things that are happening. Um, Jenny likes to send out uh, the occasional email just to notify you of the fun events and the free events that are happening. And there's also a whole resource uh, center uh, on the Creative Coast website that has a lot of wonderful information um, to help you as artists kind of get the word out and help you uh, with all of these digital tools that are now available to us. Oh, it's not launched yet, my bad, but uh, it's, uh, I've, I've taken a peek at it and it looks wonderful. So I can't wait for that launch to happen because I think everybody uh, on this call is going to find it very uh, informative and informational. Um, and again, lots of great information there. All right, so thank you again, everyone.